Ladies and gentlemen, it's spoiler in time. This is the show where we get to actually watch the television shows and talk about them because we're doing Cord Killers and we know how to get what we want to watch on Cord Killers. We can talk about them on Spoiler in Time today. We're talking about Episode 7, Season 6 of Justified, Episode 6, Season 3 of Fargo, Episode 7, Season 3 of Better Call Saul, and Episode 6 of Season 3 of The Leftovers. My fault this time because I'm a week behind. Uh, Brian is now caught up. And Brian, that's you. You're here. Yeah, man. Dang straight, I'm here, and uh, and and I'm fired up to take a look at this week's standings in the movie draft. Well, yeah. I mean, yeah, you're fired up because you're in, you're in first place. Well, yes, but not by enough. I feel like I should be in much further firstiness. Okay, yes, because your your night attack hopes. Uh, are pinned on Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 and Pirates of the Caribbean Dead Men Tell No Tales. Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, $338 million, uh, and still the number three movie this weekend. So doing what you need it to do up to this point. Uh, how do you feel about Pirates of the Caribbean on what is apparently the worst movie box office weekend since 1999, still pulling in $77 million? That's... Actually, I did not know it was such a historically low weekend. Uh, to be honest, I figured however much energy there is for a summer movie blockbuster is going to be divided between Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 and Pirates of the Caribbean. So if Pirates doesn't do well, then that just tells me that that money that would have been there went to Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, which, by the way, this week uh, crossed over. Guardians of the Galaxy Vol Volume 2 has now outperformed uh, Volume 1, uh, or the first movie. So, um... All of that, however, is kind of cold comfort because we need a very, like, basically, start. we have one more week to establish our lead, and it's got to be a very big lead over you, Tom, if we're going to win. Because you've got, uh, right now, as we record this, we are $150 million ahead of you, which means that uh, that that in order for us to, to, to win, you would have to, uh, Captain Underpants, Wonder Woman, and Atomic Blonde combined would have to make less than $150 million as of well, today. Well, don't forget Girls Trip you still have. Okay, that's not going to make any money, and we both know it. Uh, but the important thing is that if if over the next week we could get some momentum, and if and if it just keeps squeaking along, maybe, I don't know, It's uh, uh, I'm, I'm not so comfortable with our only $150 million lead over you, given how much you have left in the tank. Uh, yeah, I need Wonder Woman to perform or overperform and Captain Underpants to probably overperform a little. Uh, and I will feel comfortable that I can beat you. But here's what I realized yesterday. You know who you really got to watch out for? Those people with the boss baby have Spider-Man Homecoming and War for the Planet of the Apes still to come. There's an outside shot that Spider-Man does well enough to throw them into the hunt as well. It, it could. And to be honest, it will be a testament not to the quality of Spider-Man and Planet, uh, but instead a, a testimony to just what a what a shabby underperforming summer we have. Nobody's going to see any of this stuff. Well, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 is about the I mean, I have Fate of the Furious. Fate of the Furious, however, though underperformed. I yes. mean, 222 million means a lot of people went to see it and we knew they would, but it wasn't, I, I would have expected it to be at least 250 it, by now. It was below Guardians, on the other hand, 338 right now seems about right. That's the only one that I'm looking at that seems about right. And the only one that really clearly overperformed was the boss baby at 169 million. Yep. Agreed. Agreed. So. Well, then let's start talking about The Leftovers. Uh, apologies, uh, I was traveling this weekend, so I watched last week's Leftovers at 5 o'clock before the new one came out at 6 o'clock and then was on an airplane. Uh, so I didn't get to it. But uh, I did watch the episode uh, that has Lori show up at the farm where Kevin Sr. is and kind of... You, you get this uh, tale told through a flashback of how she had been out with Matt and Nora hunting down the scientists who had rejected Nora as a candidate for the the thing that's going to send them to where the departed are. Uh, and, and Lori went off on her own because she gets a call from now, I guess it's her stepson, uh, that Kevin Jr. is now out on the farm and they are asking him to die again 
to visit the other side before the flood is supposed to come uh, on the day of the seventh year anniversary. Um, so I'm sure there's a lot of questions raised in this episode that get answered in the next episode, and I don't really want to focus on them. I really love this idea of just flat out saying, you know, Leftovers has kind of danced around this this idea of like rapture and revelations, and they flat out reject revelations at one point in this episode with Matt saying, oh, well, revelations is not meant to be taken literally. You know, forget that. That's, that's not what that that book is about. And yet Lori, uh, talking about their last supper the night before the anniversary, uh, is told that she's Thomas cause she's a doubter and says, Oh no, I'm Judas. Uh, and it turns out she believes she's Judas because she has, uh, not poisoned, but drugged the entire company. So they would fall asleep so that she could then get some alone time with Kevin, uh, and take off on her own. Her stepson, also points out that Judas killed himself. She says, huh, I didn't know that. And then building on a previous conversation with Nora about how the best way to kill yourself is to scuba dive, we see Lori go on a scuba diving trip at the very end of the episode. Yeah, uh, I liked this episode a lot insofar as it gave us depth and nuance to the character of Lori that I don't think we've seen at any point up until then. We've we've had a lot of it hinting at we we can intuit a lot of what who she is based on, you know, who she stays behind with, who she sticks with, well, what promises she keeps and so on. But this is the first time that she was the full on protagonist of an episode for me that that I remember. Uh and I and I liked it quite a bit. Um <sighs> I mean, at the end of this episode, we we the implication is that Lori wants to kill herself. Yep. The implication is that Nora wants to go through the the portal. Yep. Uh, and Matt sticks around with Nora, so there, you know, there's sort of a question of like, oh, I wonder wonder whether he will try to stop her or whether he will also go through with her. And Kevin is leaning towards letting them uh, drown him and kill him again. So there's a lot of people headed to their end at the end of this episode. Yeah, I got to tell you, uh, what I really liked about the second season was the surprising optimism found at the most interesting of places. Um, there is a fatalism to this season that comes to a head. It begins at the end of this episode, and, and minor spoiler to you, Tom, continues through the next episode, that uh, is just not fun for me. Uh, and... Um, Maybe there's a payoff that takes me somewhere, but uh, I'm much more enchanted by stories about overcoming adversity than succumbing to it, you know? Um, yeah, I don't have much else to add to that for fear of, of just yep, bringing uh, up a lot of things that just watching the next episode is going to answer. But I definitely enjoyed this episode a lot more than the Matt episode because I felt like it moved me towards the seven year anniversary in, in a more definitive way. Yeah, uh, Bryce and I. This is a bit, bit, a little teaser. I'll set up for next week. Yeah. Uh, turns out we we very much disagreed on the next episode. So I'll be very curious to hear what you think. All right. Uh, well, uh, I will. Uh, Bryce, I will did you have any thoughts on this? One? Catching up next week so that I've watched mm -hmm. both the one that aired yesterday and next week's episode. What, well. what did you guys think about the the story in this episode being told sort of in a round like this, kind of? in 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 a, a sort of time jumping fashion back and forth it was between... fine i mean it's not a it's not a new device and and they pulled it off perfectly competently it didn't it didn't bug me one way or another okay yeah i mean like i said uh, uh, primarily what i liked was just seeing a new protagonist that we hadn't really gotten in depth with yeah mm -hmm. the flashback to lori and why she decided to join the uh the remnant uh, was was probably the most interesting thing in the episode for me. I was like, oh, okay, yes, that that now makes sense. I always kind of wondered. I got a vague idea of her des, you know, oh, she was desperate and depressed, whatever. But seeing it sometimes will make it feel less like it makes sense. And this this particular telling of it definitely made it make more sense to me. Yeah, uh, super excited for us to talk about next episode. Uh, and and you know what, uh, I I will say uh, again. Little this foreshadowing, not spoilering, but um, I strongly suspect that my feelings that I have right now will feel different. I think this episode, this next episode that you haven't seen, Tom, I think I will feel 
very different about once I see the next week's episode. And so it'll be interesting. You'll get to see them back back to back. Mm-hmm. You'll get that binge experience that maybe will uh, put it in a different place. Well, right? and next week is the series finale. Oh, right. oh wow. So yeah. you, you guys could be finishing this off next week, potentially. Yep. Yeah. All right. Uh, Better Call Saul, Episode 7, uh, Season 3. Uh, more adventures of Jimmy McGill trying to sell advertising to people uh, is kind of all I remember from this episode, along with Kim starting to really feel guilty about what they've done to Chuck. Yeah, uh, starting to you know, starting to leak into her other work. Um, meanwhile, you know, we're seeing Saul uh, diligently, diligently going down, a class act going down with the, 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 the ship, you know, taking money out of his pocket to pay his his uh, uh, motley crew of, of um, uh, I don't know, uh, team members. His production crew. Yeah, his production co- crew. Um, the... Uh, meanwhile, we got some good advancement on the Mike side of thing. I, I, I like seeing, I like this contrast between Mike, the hard nosed, um, I don't know, PI? asshole. What would you call him? A, a PI? Uh, uh, oh no 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 or, no! I, I'm talking about who he becomes. He becomes a freaking like hard case fixer. Yeah, yeah, a hard case yeah. fixer, and uh, uh, for the criminal underworld. Whereas we're still seeing. This patchwork of him at his best, volunteering at a church, uh, on behalf, taking care of his his daughter in law and and his his grandson, or granddaughter, and so on, um, just right next to the the, con- the casual conversations. I gotta tell you, man, Nacho is the star of the show for me right now. Like him and his attempted wanting to poison, you know, his his uh, not or his boss basically, right. Yeah. It's, oh, it, 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 exactly. Because uh, he was wanting Salamanca, to Hector Salamanca. Yes, correct. Salamanca. And and we don't know if whatever this, this is the great thing. We know it doesn't kill him, but we can wonder if this is what causes him to yeah. lose his ability to speak and lead and all that stuff. Uh, and, and I like Mike Ehrmantraut because he is the guy you meet in Breaking Bad. You see that. Like everything that comes out of his mouth is consistent with the guy you meet in Breaking Bad. The only difference is his motivations and who he works for. Uh, And right now he has different motivations and he works for himself uh, largely. But he's in Breaking Bad. You see him saying, you don't really want to do that. Let me tell you why. And that's exactly what he's doing for everyone. Baseball card guide, Nacho, Jimmy McGill. Like he's, he's like the only one who really sees it. And yet, you know, no, even with all of that common sense, he's not going to be able to avoid getting sucked into all of that. Yeah, it's uh, and what's funny is if there is one character who you would believe has the willpower to avoid getting sucked into it and, and doubling down on poor decisions, you believe it would be Mike. But of course, we know we know his fate. We know he's damned from the beginning, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, How about that ending where we see. Uh, there was that great moment where you couldn't tell, is this a, is this a bit? Is he actually broken? Is he crying, trying to recover some of his insurance malpractice money? Uh, or or and then and then that moment, you hear him say like, no, he's having a breakdown and he hates me and as all. As soon this as stuff. he started to describe Chuck, I, I was I was bought and sold that he was really just having a breakdown until he mentioned Chuck. I'm like, oh shit. You're like, oh you. Well, and what's funny is it's. Definitely a case where I feel like it was a target of opportunity. I don't think, and this is, I'd be curious to take your take. I don't think he started the whole thing just with the intention of screwing over his brother. No, he wanted his money back. I mean, he still wanted his money back when he walked out. Definitely. Then he felt that moment of like, well, if I'm going to get screwed, I can make sure somebody else gets it even worse. No, I think think you're absolutely right. Uh, And that is going to... That is going to cause more problems with Kim, potentially, because if this causes problems for Chuck and Kim's feeling guilty about Chuck and then she finds out that Jimmy did this to Chuck, uh, she's going to be upset about that. But every time I think Kim is going to be driven away from Jimmy by his uh, choices, she seems to fall further into love with him. And, And that was the interesting part about the restaurant scene 
where they're, you know, yeah. making up their stories and he starts to get really into it. And she's like, we're, we're kidding around. Right. And he's like, yeah, yeah. Just, that, uh, that was a precipice moment for sure. Yeah. And, and you found them on differing sides of that line. I mean, what if that, I mean, we've toyed with all of these, like what happens to Kim scenarios? What if a scenario that happens to Kim is she resists and falls in love, resists and falls in love. And one of these times, the reason we see all of these anecdotes of them pretending to, to rip someone off is one of these times she goes through with it and gets caught and he doesn't. Uh, yeah. I don't know. All right. Uh, on to Fargo episode six, season three, where in uh, we get we get to meet, see uh Nora, <laughs> I can't remember Carrie Coon's character. By the way, uh, I, 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 as, as oh man, I, 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 I'm, I'm going to say it. Uh, this is now my favorite Carrie Coon character. Uh, it's no longer Nora. Nora used to be my favorite, and now. Well, Nora was. I, I, I mean, I'm sorry, Fargo people who aren't watching Leftovers. You're not going to get this reference, but Nora was kind of a jerk in this last episode of Leftovers. Yeah. In a way that uh, that the Carrie Coon character on season three of Fargo is definitely not. Ding, 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 ding! Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Yeah. Uh, so as 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 we go to uh, what is this one called? The House? No, the the Lord of No Mercy. Yeah, I I, I got to know what they're doing with these titles. None of these make any sense. Uh, the the law of reciprocal uh, palavering or whatever. You know, it's like they got like I don't know what none of that means. Gloria Burgle. That's Carrie Coon's character's Burgle. name here. Uh, Gloria Burgle uh, and her and her partner from the other uh, sheriff's office uh, team up and and get to meet uh, VM Varga. And Via Varga uh, sort of beats his match in in a way. He, I mean, she doesn't win against him. He's too good for that. But she doesn't fall for any of his stuff. Yeah. Uh, Var uh, the increased genuine mutually beneficial relationship between Stussy and Varga uh, is one of my favorite parts about this episode, where you see them actually acting like a team, which we had started to see in previous episodes, <clears throat> especially... When it comes to the point where, um, uh, you know, Stussy's number one is saying, well, we got we got to do this. And then uh, and finally, Stussy is like, hey, man, look, uh, whether you dip a toe in or just dive right in, both feet are getting wet. You know, that's that's how this goes. We're in. We're <laughs> we're apparently criminals now. Yeah. Uh, and uh, he's a murderer by the end of this episode. I mean, I I'm actually kind of sad to see Ray Stussy go. Yeah, I was surprised by that. Sorry for anyone. Who oh yeah, no worries. Like it, it, it was a chilling, it was a chilling moment that that they milked in a way that this this series has not been as gory as some of the previous uh, seasons, and and this one wasn't gory so much as just uh, gra graphic in that well, you're just sitting there telling Emmett like, go stop the bleeding if you feel if you really feel bad, but he just. He, he's frozen. He can't do anything. And you watch Ray die right in front of him. It's horrible. Yeah, it's uh, it, 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 we mentioned this last week that finally it feels like Fargo, which it's not bad. I, I enjoy the rather lighthearted first four episodes or so that we got out of this. But now we are at a place where things are collapsing very, very quickly. And now we are seeing. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we talk about it a bit like a chess match, you know, in the early game and then the mid game. Now we're to the end game. Um, the end game is when all of a sudden so many pieces get swept off the table and there's really only a few players. And in this case, we got uh, we got Stussy, uh, the uh, the other. I want to think of him as the older brother, but they're twins. Um, uh, you have Stussy. You have uh, uh, Ray Stussy's girlfriend, who is very much vindictive and clever as can be. I like the fact that we write her off as a you know semi junky floozy or whatever at the beginning, yeah. and just she's never failed to overperform and impress in her wit, in her smarts, in her long term view of everything. Um, she's going to be a fascinating character, and I got to tell you, uh, part of me thinks that 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 in Varga, of course, the third player, and I guess I guess uh, uh, Burgle in there as well. Um, well, Gloria is the wild card factor, right? She's she's the uh, the Hanks Jr. character uh, of, of this season. And she shows up at the Stussies uh, and just misses catching the murder. Yeah. Well, and then, of course, that's the final few seconds of this episode is that she's given up and then she just has she has a, a, a little inkling, you know, a little winkle in her eye. And she's just yeah. like, ah, screw it. And she turns around. She gets I'm word almost, to her. I'm almost like, no, Gloria, don't go back there. It's too dangerous. But. 
She can take care of herself. Uh, wait, well, something's gonna happen. She's. I, yeah. I, I'm. I'm getting ready for the Three's Company episode of you know them hiding the body around the background. While she's knocking while she's on the door. Around, and, yeah. Yeah. Also, uh, I want to give a shout out to uh, Mimo, Andy Yu's character, uh, who plays the opposing lawyer to the IRS. So auditor. good. That moment. That moment of perfect mirroring. And we've yeah. seen him as this disaffected, tuned out, uh, you know, thug. And to see like, oh, that's why you're on the team. You are elegance and nuance and precision of social engineering. That 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 was a great moment. Yeah. And uh, by the way, IRS uh, guy played by Hamish Linklater, who is also in Legion. I don't know if you recognize Oh, that. I didn't. I missed that. That's awesome. Yeah, he's the guy who's hunting in, in Legion. Um, what else we got going on in this episode? I think that that pretty much ab ab about covers it. Yeah, well, you have the uh, that surprising moment, man. Like uh, Ray makes a, a, a dipstick maneuver of leaving the, the getaway cash, goes back and like this close, this close to... Everything being fine for all parties. But instead, yeah. what what did it was genuinely giving up like, hey, man, I realized that, that I'm involved with a multi-billion dollar conspiracy and I'm a full on. Crit I don't have time. The yeah, volume here, is so the turned stamp. down give on this. Crap. Yeah, exactly. And yet that's the moment that that killed Ray and, and broke broke their relationship. Well, finally, I feel like what Emmett's doing is silencing Ray. He's like. I'm involved in something bigger than this stamp. Take the stamp. I'm buying your silence. I'm buying you off as a problem. I don't need you coming after me and muddying the waters right now. Go away. And I think that's also why he freezes because he didn't want to kill Ray. But when it looks like Ray's dying, he freezes because he's like, well, that's another way to make sure Ray doesn't muddy the waters anymore. Correct. Uh, by the way, Jackie Hearn in the chat pointing out that that motel was the same motel at the end of season two, which I totally caught. Did you catch that? No, I didn't catch that at all. That's uh, hilarious. I'm, I'm pretty certain that one of the kitchens that we've seen is the one that the, the butcher had in season two. Like, I think it's the same house painted different as well. Right. But I don't know. I'd have to do double check that. All right, let's finish up Justified Season 6, Episode 7, uh, where uh, we have Boyd taken Ava up into the cabin in the hills uh, to put the screws to her and find out what's going on. And uh, it probably what is her only smart move is to just tell him, like, yeah, the only way I got out of jail was agreeing to be a CI against you on Raylan. So do what you're going to do. All my cards are on the table. Man, that tension was real. Like that yeah. that was palpable and they strung that out long enough to be agonizing, but not so long that it stretched uh, you know, credibility or you know, I stretch credu credulity? credulity. Credulity, I guess. Yeah. I think. But you wouldn't stretch credulity because Well, it depends on what it's made of. You want, yeah, okay, all right. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's taffy. Uh the uh, so um I got to tell you all of that was fascinating because you know, she knew this is all super weird, and she's just trying to figure out how deep it goes and where this is headed. Um, she makes some really smart plays early on by saying, hey, you know who's a total ass that, that we both agree was a bad person? Your brother. These are the things your brother would do to me. Yeah. Let me make it clear. By the way, are, are you, you your brother? Are you him? Right. Exactly. And then sure enough, they get there, and, and that moment that she slaps him enough times and it, and it, and it gets his ire uh, and – that moment immediately turns into passionate sex, although I got no passion out of it. It was like she knows she just poked the bear and she's screwed. And like this is her one move to do is to, yeah. to get screwed. Yeah, exactly. In 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 the safe way versus the shot through the head way. Um, I like that. I, I, and I could see where you might not like this. And I'm curious whether you liked it or not. I liked that we see Boyd put the clip in the gun that has the bullets in it. Yeah, uh, I, I suspected that was what he was up to all the time. And um, to be honest, like, even if they didn't show that, I would have just assumed that that was a mind game testing he was doing. Yeah. But and, and I'm pretty I'm sure the boy they... didn't want to kill Ava, but he wanted he needed to have her feel there was a real threat. I, I disagree. I think he totally plans to kill her. And the most effective way to cover. Oh, his no, ass... I meant at the cabin. That's why he didn't have the bullets in the gun. Oh, no, no, no. He didn't have the bullets in the gun because he needed to know whether or not she would kill him. That's right, why he exactly. manufactured that opportunity to hand it to her. He needed information gathering. And then that's why he was able – he knew also because he's an, an exquisite manipulator 
He knew that he needs to make himself seem like the unhinged, desperate one, which says if you're sleeping with Rayleigh, and, you know, he doesn't really care. He's just picking that no. out of the sky. If he's Boyd's like, going to kill Ava, he's going to kill her and throw her down a mine shaft. He's, he's not going to take her up in the cabin and toy with her. Uh-uh, uh-uh, he totally will, because it's the only way he can find out what Raylan knows. No, no, That's no, no, no. why. I, I think, I, because I'm totally agreeing with you. I'm saying once Boyd has decided to kill Ava. Correct. When he's like, I, I, she needs to die now. Right. There is nothing more I can get from her, and I can't trust her. He doesn't take her to the cabin to kill her. Right. He he just kills her. Right. But uh, but but, but and everything that doesn't, we saw that doesn't contradict anything you're saying, which is he took her up there to test her loyalty, find out what was going on, and all of that. Well, and specifically, I don't think he believes her loyal at all. Uh, I think she, quote unquote, passed the test. I don't think he cared about the test. I think he needed to get her in a place where her only move was complete and total honesty, complete disclosure about everything Raylan knows. And which, yeah. you know, he is now like when he got the call from Limehouse, he realized, oh, I am behind the curve on this information race. I need to extract the maximum amount of information immediately. And so for him, it's like, you know, pretend like I'd rather kill myself than believe Avra isn't going to leave And he me. very well may kill her down the road once he's done with all this. Right, but I saying. don't believe he was sincere yeah. about any of that. Maybe he tapped into some sincere feelings in order to access that I play think acting. he feels love for her more than he would admit to himself, but... It's a question about how far it goes versus his practicality. Yeah, I yeah. agree. Uh, we also Otherwise, he would have got her out of jail. You know? Well, yeah, I, mean, I mean, she's right about that, man. He yeah. definitely, definitely not long on the promise keeping. And then plus also immediately after getting into, hey, let's define what a bad Crowder looks like. And then immediately let's have Boyd start exactly doing the things that we just defined a bad yeah. Crowder does. Um, uh, that that was the brilliance of this episode. There's also the side plot of the hunt for the guy from Mindy Project. Uh, the bearded dude? Yeah. Yeah. No, that was good. I liked what they did. Um, those were signs of – it's always fun to see a villain uh, out of moves where they get increasingly desperate and they know they're doing it. They know it's sloppy work, but they just don't – they're out of options. Um, yeah. Can I tell you how much I, I – you you might be surprised to hear this. Out of everything – Loved every second with uh, Raylan and his ex-wife. Ex uh, oh yeah, his baby with, mom. Um, she, huh. she she yeah. she's the ex-wife, right? And then they got back together. Winona, the baby. Winona, yes. yeah. Um. Uh, oh yeah, no, that doesn't surprise me at all. It's a story about a father and his daughter. Okay. Come on, of course you're gonna love it. Yes, I loved it for that, but also I loved it. I noticed a lot of really interesting directorial choices that I've not seen in Justified before. One of which, to just have that three-minute dialogue scene with a screaming kid the entire time, like, it was, it, much as we were talking about, like, that scene in Logan, that it was physically unpleasant to hear the seizure noise, like, like you're watching somebody at her wit's end trying to resolve stuff with, with her, her baby daddy, and, uh, and, and, and meanwhile, you just have screaming in your ear the entire time. Um, that was great, and I also loved, if you notice all of Winona's dialogue, there's a lot, she speaks more naturally than any character on the show has ever spoken, in that she begins ideas, and then she stops, and she regroups, and tries to phrase it a different way, and it doesn't quite come out the way we actually talk, even right here on this podcast. Uh, it was a breath of fresh air, not to say I didn't enjoy all the the verbal talking between the lines jousting that we always get from it. But there was a very different feel to Winona's dialogue that I really enjoyed this episode. Uh, yeah. There's also a little showdown between art and, uh, and uh, <laughs> one of the called Ghost. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But uh, uh, you know, that, that Avery just, Markham. We get to see Avery and art go head to head. Honestly, I could have gotten more out of that interaction if you're gonna you're gonna bring two superheroes from the opposite sides together I'd, I'd like it to mean more than it did but it was kind of fun to watch. by the way i'm now actively convinced that art is actually a ghost not even a metaphor <laughs> an actual ghost i think it's sixth sense style they're gonna reveal rachel sees dead people yeah he was never there <laughs> yeah yeah maybe uh well that's it everybody thank you so much uh for watching and don't forget uh we are on our way to a goal to get spoiler in time, uh, old episodes broken up so they're easily found by show. So if you're like, I have not watched uh, all these shows, but I want to go back and find out what you guys thought of them when you did talk about them, 
Uh, join us at patreon.com slash cord killers. Uh, basically, if you're getting this episode on Wednesday instead of Monday, it's because you're not a patron. So go to patreon.com slash cord killers, get spoiler in time a couple days early, and get us on the road to an easier accessible archive of spoiler in time shows. Heck yes. Thank you guys. We love you. Bye. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this broker. <laughs>